Hey guys, welcome back to the Thoman Bedroom Producer channel. My name's Cloda, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made a liquid drum and bass remix of End of Beginning by Joe. Liquid drum and bass is a subgenre of drum and bass which often creates an emotional and uplifting atmosphere. When I first heard this song I thought it would sound really good as a drum and bass remix because it has that sort of nostalgic and emotional feeling to it and that's something that I tried to capture in the remix as well. So let's jump straight into it and I'll show you how I made the remix. So firstly let's look at some of the melodic elements. When I make liquid drum and bass one of the first things I always do is start with the pads. The pads usually set the tone of the remix and what sort of style and vibe that you're going for. So this is the pad sound that I went with. So I made the sound on Vital and I've just used a saw wave on oscillator one and added a filter. It's a really simple sound to make and I've added some effects. So I've added some chorus, a compressor, some EQ and some reverb onto it. And then on top of that, I've also added some RC20, which has just given it a lot more reverb and some of this magnetic as well. So with this pad, I really wanted it to just fill out the soundscape and make it sound really dreamy and ethereal. And I also doubled that pad with a sort of string pad on Massive. And as you can see down on the left in the MIDI monitor, I've used seventh chords in the key of the original song. I also found this vocal atmosphere from Splice, which you can see I've automated. So in the intro, I've just automated that to get a bit louder. And I've also side-chained that vocal to some of the tops on the drums, which I'll get onto later. And lastly, for this sort of pad section, I found this flute sample. And I've just added some echo to that and nothing else really. To me, it almost sounded like a train sort of going past, but I really like how it fitted in at the end of certain phrases. And now I quickly want to take a look at some of the lead sounds that I have. So one thing in the original song that I really liked was the synths that you hear in the background. Some of them do this sort of melody. So you can hear that in the original song and that's something that I really wanted to keep in it. So I went on to Complete Control and this Blade Runner string sound on Massive, a really airy, reverby lead sound. And with the melody, I've kept that first bit in, which you hear in the original song. And then I've just sort of done it the other way. So sort of going up and then going down. I've also added an eighth note delay onto it. So without the delay, it sounds like this. And then with the delay. Another melodic motif that I took from the original was this sort of sound. Which I've automated a filter on into the build up. So in terms of the melodic sounds, that's kind of it. And for the vocals in the verses, I've got this part. So I wanted to repeat that 24 but wanted it to sound a little bit different. All I did to get that really low effect was just take it down 12 semitones and it sounded pretty cool so I thought I'd keep that in there. And now let's move on to the drums. So here's what the drums sound like all together after the first drop. So this is made up of this tops loop, just kind of hitting on the ride cymbal. And that's layered with this other top loop. And with processing on this, I've just added EQs onto them and not really touched them anywhere else. Here's the kick pattern. which is that classic sort of drum and bass pattern, but the sounds that I've gone for are quite light sounds. Let me play that kick with the snares. So 
So with these snares, you might see the ones below and the ones that are a bit smaller in the kick here. These are ghost snares and ghost kicks. And these kind of help give that drum and bass groove that you want instead of just hitting boom, ch boom, ch I've lowered the gain and the sound on this. And then also I've got two crashes. That one which has quite a long tail and then this and then lastly i've got this hi-hat sound hitting on the 16th note so before the first drop i only have the top loops and the kick and i've also got the hi-hat so if you want to listen to the hats on this build up they sound like this and then And that's a nice way to create tension in your build-ups with your hi-hats. And also just before the drop, I've sampled this part from the actual song. When making remixes like this, I like to include little bits from the original song like this. And this is one bit that stood out to me. Then after that's played, I've actually just got it repeating. And it's kind of like a little siren in the background, but it just gives it a little bit of ear candy. But I think it's nice and adds a little touch of the original into the remix. I also wanted to get some form of live instruments into this remix. So I actually played some guitar on this intro just because it was sounding a little bit bare. Just playing the same chords as the pads. And I played that just clean into Ableton and then added RC20 on it and they have a preset called Lush and Crunch Guitar. So I just added that onto it and I think it sounded really cool. So I didn't really do much other processing apart from that and just added an EQ to get out some of the highs and lows. And now onto the first bass sound. I made this on Vital and it's sort of a sub Reese bass and it's not very harsh, but it's really nice. It kind of fills out the low end. So on Vital, on the first oscillator, I have a sawtooth wave here. I've got it in nine voices for the unison. I've added a filter, taken the decay up and the sustain, and then added some chorus and distortion onto it. So I'll just solo it so you can hear what it sounds like. And then where you're getting that movement from, I've actually automated the filter one cutoff. And I know you can do this on Vital, but for some reason I just did it on Ableton. So that's a sort of get the effect that the bass is sort of opening up. So instead of being sort of flat here, And I did that just to give it a bit of variation, make it sound a bit more interesting. And I just want to touch on the processing on the vocals. I got these vocals from a stem splitter. So obviously it already has the processing on the vocals that are in the original song. So I didn't want to mess around with them too much because they sounded really nice already. But I thought just to make it a little bit interesting, I added some tremolo. So it sort of gives it that thing that is bouncing around on that I feel it. So I've just automated the tremolo to come on in 16ths. Back in Chicago, I see it. Which I think was a cool little stutter vocal trick, which made it sound a little bit more interesting. And then of course I have a lot of different FX sounds. So I've got these risers here. And then this little tiny riser before the drop into that effect that is sort of like the downer sort of spiral. Which just helps it lead into the next section. So that's just before the drop. This bit down here, you might be wondering what this is. This is just an atmosphere sample that I found on Splice, sometimes called Foley or Atmosphere. And it's just some sort of rain sounds, which is... You hear that quite a lot in liquid drum and bass, the sort of rain in the background and lo-fi. It helps give it that sort of moody, ambient feel. And those are all the elements of the first section. But then in this middle bit here, I decided to switch up all of the drums and I kind of did like a jungle drum break. So after the first chorus, I'll just play it for you first. I 
I added in this little drum fill and it sort of filters in and out. So you kind of don't really know where it's going. And then it sort of drops into that jungle drum break. I took the end of this break and put it there, just sort of chopped and changed it a little bit. And I also added this perk loop on top of the drums. Which I thought sounded quite cool. Decided to add some more guitar onto it. So I just played this melody over the top. I actually recorded this into Guitar Rig 6, but I bounced it out so you can't see the preset now, but it was just a chorus preset on there. And I doubled it, panned some to the left, some to the right, just to give it that really wide sound. And that's what that sort of jungle breakdown section sounds like. And then in the second and third drops, there's only two more things that I added in. I added this re-space. But I wanted it to sort of bounce along with the drums, so I added kickstart and I changed this up here to eighth notes, so it ducks out every eighth note, which gives it that sort of pulsing feeling. And with the vocals here, I've just again added that tremolo. And then I've automated the delay on that final bit just before the final drop. So that sounds like this. Then for that final drop, I wanted to introduce a new sound. I got this other bass sound that I made on Wavetable. And again, it's sort of a saw wave here. The attack's about two milliseconds, delay's about three seconds. And I've added a saturator, quite a lot of saturator. And the thing that really gives it that crunch is this amp here. And it adds a sort of different dimension to that final drop. And then in terms of the vocals for this final drop, I basically just wanted to chop up the sample just to give it some variation rather than having the same chorus again. So this is what I did with the vocals. <laughs> Again with the tremolo and I've got a ping pong delay on that as well. For that second section, I've actually doubled it and put it an octave higher. So it sounds like this. And that's how I made this liquid drum and bass remix of End of Beginning by Joe. I've got the full remix out on my YouTube channel and my SoundCloud if you want to give it a listen. Let me know down in the comments below if you've ever tried to make a liquid drum and bass song. As always, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more music production content and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Peace.